The Mexican fire Lake tarantula, known scientifically as the Brachypelma bomai, is an exceptionally beautiful tarantula known for their velvety black abdomen and bright orange legs. They are very similar in appearance to other Mexican tarantulas, such as the Afonipelma bicoloratum and Brachypelma homori. The Brachypelma bomai can be found on the Pacific coast in the Guerrero state of Mexico, living mainly in the dry scrublands. They are a ground-dwelling, opportunistic burrower, which means they make their burrow wherever it is convenient, including the empty burrows of other animals. The fire leg has a moderate growth rate, not as slow as a Fonapelma species, but also not as quick as shorter-lived tarantulas like the Avicularia. Females can reach over 6 inches in leg span and live for as long as 25 years. Males, on the other hand, tend to be a little smaller, thinner, and typically don't live any longer than seven or eight years. Of all the Brachypelma species, this tarantula has a reputation for being more defensive than most, and they usually do not hesitate to kick predicating hairs at the slightest sign of a threat. And of all the New World tarantulas with predicating hairs, there seems to be among the top 10 most irritating so it is important to use gloves and take other precautions when rehousing, handling, or cleaning out their enclosures, and always keep them away from your face and eyes. This species' natural environment has temperatures that range from 72 degrees to nearly 82 degrees on average. During the day, when the temperatures are at their warmest, tarantulas typically take shelter in their burrows, which are much cooler and not nearly as dry as the environment just outside. When the sun and the temperatures begin to drop outside, that is when this tarantula will leave the safety of its home. So keeping your Mexican fire leg at a comfortable room temperature between 70 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit would be ideal. They are not a tropical species found on the floor of the rainforest, so any concerns over the humidity levels are not necessary, and your typical room humidity should be adequate. But for extremely dry conditions, keeping a water dish in their enclosure that you occasionally overflow to soak the corner of the substrate in their enclosure should provide them with the adequate moisture that they require. You can feed your spiderlings small crickets or nymph roaches, but you should avoid feeding them any prey larger than the tarantula. If you don't have anything small enough available to feed them, you can pre-kill the smallest cricket you have and drop it into the enclosure for them to scavenge. You can also use the legs from larger crickets or cut a cricket or roach in half. Make sure to remove any uneaten prey after a few hours and never leave uneaten pieces of prey in the enclosure to help prevent mold and mites. Do not feed a freshly molted tarantula right away. It is best to wait about 48 hours after a spiderling molts before offering food so you can be sure their exoskeleton has sufficiently hardened. Juveniles can be fed two or three small or medium crickets once every week or two, depending on the size of their abdomen. Don't use any prey larger than two-thirds the size of the tarantula, and if you need to feed them something larger, smash the prey's head before dropping it into the enclosure. This species can go weeks without eating, so if they do not eat right away, check up on them 24 hours later and remove any prey they have not finished and try again in a week or two. It is best to wait five to seven days after a molt before feeding a juvenile again. The larger the tarantula, the longer you will need to wait before feeding them to give them plenty of time to harden up. And for adults, you can feed your fire leg tarantula five or six large crickets every three to four weeks. The best rule of thumb is to determine the amount and frequency by the size of your tarantula's abdomen. If their abdomen is smaller than the carapace, they are underfed and can be fed more often. But when their abdomen is about the same size or larger than their carapace, it is time to cut back on the amount and frequency. Overfeeding can lead to difficulties with mobility and shedding their exoskeleton. As they get closer to pre-molt, they will become less interested in food and can go on hunger strikes that can last weeks or even months. So do not be concerned if your tarantula does not eat for extended periods of time. As long as their abdomen is plump, they will be fine, and they're probably just not very hungry. Trying to keep your tarantula on a regimented feeding schedule can cause more stress and harm than good. Make sure to remove any uneaten prey or boluses within 24 hours and wait 10 to 14 days after a molt before attempting to feed them again. 
It is also recommended to occasionally mix up their prey with mealworms, roaches, hornworms, and other feeders from time to time to give them a little variety in their diet. Like most tarantula species, these spiders are not communal, so you can only keep one tarantula per enclosure. It is important to make sure that you choose an appropriately sized enclosure for your spider. Another good rule of thumb is the enclosure should be no smaller than three times the leg span of your spider. Providing a slightly larger enclosure than the bare minimum is always a great idea, but do not go too large. Putting a spiderling in an adult enclosure can lead to many problems. The tarantula could hide out of sight and it will be difficult to locate them and make sure that they are still alive and healthy. Too much space can make the chances of their prey crossing paths with them or their ability to catch their prey much lower. Also, the ventilation holes and gaps in most juvenile and adult enclosures are large enough that your spiderling could potentially squeeze through and escape. Remember that if they can fit their carapace through a gap, they can squeeze their abdomen through it as well. So choose your enclosures widely. We suggest you keep your spiderlings in basic spiderling enclosures with plenty of depth for substrate. Some great enclosures for these spiderlings would be the Sling Crib, Cuboid Mini, Slider Crib Mini, and 3-inch Cube. Fill the enclosure at least two-thirds with substrate so it has plenty of room to burrow. For slings under three-quarters of an inch, try to keep the substrate slightly dry and provide a tiny water dish or drip water down the side of the enclosure. Some enclosure options for juvenile Mexican fire-leg tarantulas would be the 6-inch cube, small cuboid, and small slider cribs. Again, fill the enclosure up a little over halfway with substrate and provide a hide and water dish no wider than the tarantula's leg span. For adults, you want to give your tarantula plenty of room to move around, so the large slider crib, 12-inch cube, large cuboid, and terrestrial XL cribs are great options for adults, while the 8-inch cube, medium slider, and medium cuboid will work well for sub-adults. You set these enclosures up the same way as the smaller ones. Fill the enclosure up at least halfway with substrate. Provide a hide and water dish and any decorations as long as they are not sharp or heavy. Using this much substrate isn't just provide them with plenty of depth to make their burrow. This also helps mitigate any damage they could receive if they were to climb up the sides of the enclosure and fall. You want there to be no more than one and a half times the leg span of the tarantula from the top of the enclosure to the substrate. This species is known for climbing the walls and even across the top of the enclosure, especially for the first few months after being rehoused. So give them plenty of substrate to minimize any risk of fall damage and keep them safe. Let's put together a semi-arid terrestrial enclosure for an adult Brachypelma bomai, so you have an example of their husbandry. We will start off using the Tarantula Crib's large cuboid enclosure that measures 14 by 10 by 8 inches. Then add your favorite substrate. We suggest Terra Arania by the Biodude. Fill the enclosure up halfway with a substrate and add a little water so it is slightly damp. Be careful not to oversaturate. Mixing in some dry sphagnum moss will help maintain humidity as it absorbs any excess water and slowly releases the moisture over time, helping to regulate humidity. Don't forget to slightly compress the substrate as it will settle over time, and lightly compacting it will help it hold any burrows they dig much better than leaving it loose. Add a cork bark hide in one corner of the enclosure. Cork bark is light and resistant to mold growth. Sloping the substrate over the back of the hide gives a much more natural appearance while securing the hide into place. Throw in some more substrate if the level is below the halfway mark. Now it is time to add any live plants or decorations. If you're using live plants, choose ones that have low light and moisture requirements. Do not use any plant or cacti with thorns or sharp points or edges for the tarantula safety. A great way to provide adequate humidity while keeping the substrate dry is to use some live terrarium moss in one corner of the enclosure. This will give your spider a humidity gradient so they can choose how much moisture they want to be exposed to at any given time. Choose a water dish that is not too deep or heavy and place it far from their hide. For the final touches, you can sprinkle some exoterra stone desert around the enclosure. Follow that up by scattering crushed dry leaves around the enclosure. You can even break up some dried sphagnum moss and sprinkle that around the enclosure to really give it a scrubland vibe. Lightly water your plants and fill up the water dish and you are done. 
the Brachypelma boma is as feisty as they are beautiful. They are quick to bolt and even quicker to kick hairs, so always take precautions when rehousing them or any time you open their enclosure. All tarantulas are venomous, but this species does not possess medically significant venom. But still be careful because a bite will hurt. This tarantula is very hardy and their care is very basic, making them a simple species to care for in captivity. That alongside the fact that they have vibrant colors and spend a lot of time out on display makes them one of the most popular pet tarantula species. Their irritating hairs and defensive nature may make them more of an intermediate species of tarantula, but they can easily be cared for by beginners as long as they take the necessary precautions. So if you don't have a Mexican fire leg tarantula, then this is a species you should definitely consider adding to your list. Your Brachypelma bomai tarantula deserves the very best. So check out the full line of high-end acrylic enclosures for tarantulas and other invertebrates at tarantulacribs.com. And don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, and then subscribe so you don't miss any new videos coming out in the future.